Deterostromonium. Poisonous Plants Documentary. Have you ever wondered how a single plant could possess the power to heal and to harm? What if I told you it could unlock the doors to a realm of sacred visions, yet also lead you down a treacherous path of delirium? Join us as we unveil the mysteries of the Datura plant, known by many names, but one thing's for sure, it's a botanical enigma. Before discovering this plant, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell to stay updated on the latest videos we publish. Are you ready? Okay, let's get started. In the world of botanical mysteries, one name stands out to Gerostromonium. Known by a multitude of colloquial names such as Thorn Apple, Jimson Weed, Devil's Snare, or Devil's Trumpet, this enigmatic plant belongs to the Solanaceae family. Its story takes us on a journey from its Central American origins to its conquest of diverse world regions, thriving particularly in temperate climates. Traditionally, Datura stramonium was a trusted ally in indigenous medicine, offering remedies for various ailments. However, it gained infamy as a potent hallucinogen of the anticholinergic, antimuscarinic, deliriant variety. When used as an entheogen, it unlocks intense, sacred, or occult visions. But it's not a substance to be taken lightly. Its profoundly disorienting and potentially fatal effects have earned it a reputation for causing the dreaded anticholinergic syndrome. This plant's psychoactive properties, deeply rooted in tropane alkaloids, underscore its severe toxicity. Unveiling its botanical beauty. Let's dive into the botanical realm of Datura stramonium. Picture an erect annual herb, boldly branching out to reach heights of 60 to 150 centimeters. Its roots are long, thick, fibrous, and as white as pure snow. The stem, sturdy and upright, wears a smooth coat of pale yellow-green to reddish-purple hues. As it ascends, it divides repeatedly into branches, each adorned with a leaf and a solitary, upright flower. The leaves, measuring 8 to 20 centimeters in length, boast a smooth texture, serrated edges, and an irregular undulation. A bittersweet and nauseating taste lingers, even in their dried extracts. In the heart of summer, this plant bursts into fragrant trumpet-shaped flowers, a spectrum of colors from white to creamy to violet, each six to nine centimeters long. These blossoms emerge from short stems, often from the leaf axils or branch forks. The calyx, elongated and tubular, swells at its base, crowned by five pointed teeth. Within the folded and partially open corolla lies a white, funnel-shaped flower adorned with prominent ribs. These nocturnal blooms emit an enchanting fragrance, a siren's call to night-flying moths. And then there's the seed capsule, egg-shaped and measuring 3 to 8 centimeters in diameter, a deceptive beauty that may be either spiny or smooth. Over time, it splits into four chambers, each housing a treasure trove of small black seeds. A name shrouded in mystery. But what's in a name? The genus Datura traces its roots to Hindi. Datura, echoing its Sanskrit predecessor. Datura, a name that speaks of the white thorn apple. In the United States, it has donned the moniker Jimson Weed, or occasionally, the Jamestown Weed. The latter title harks back to Jamestown, Virginia, where English soldiers unwittingly embraced the plant during Bacon's Rebellion, embarking on a peculiar chapter in history. Across regions, common names for Datura stramonium vary widely, reflecting its many facets thorn apple, moonflower, hell's bells, devil's trumpet, devil's weed, togwacha, jamestown weed, stinkweed, loco weed, prickly burr, false castor oil plant, and devil's cucumber. A global conqueror. From its native North American roots, Datura stramonium has ventured across the old world, naturalizing itself in new territories. In 1753, Swedish botanist Carl Linnaeus officially introduced it to the world, although earlier botanists like Nicholas Culpepper had mentioned it a century prior. Today, this resilient plant thrives in warm and temperate regions across the globe. Roadsides, dung-rich livestock enclosures, and even garbage dumps in Europe have become its home. In South Africa, it goes by the Afrikaans name, Malpit, a testament to its widespread presence. Toxicity. The entire Datura plant contains perilous levels of tropane alkaloids, namely atropine, hyoscyamine, 
and scopolamine, all classified as delirients or anticholinergics. The risk of fatal overdose looms large for uninformed users, leading to numerous hospitalizations among recreational users pursuing the plant's psychoactive effects. The toxin content in Datura plants varies widely, with factors such as age, location, and local weather conditions playing pivotal roles. Remarkably, non-native plants may exhibit toxin concentrations 20 to 40 times lower than their native counterparts, likely an evolutionary response to diminished predation. Toxicity also varies within a single plant, even among its leaves. A seed contains approximately 0.1 mg of atropine, with a fatal dose for adult humans surpassing 10 mg of atropine or 2 to 4 mg of scopolamine. Detura intoxication manifests as delirium, hallucinations, hyperthermia, tachycardia, peculiar behavior, urinary retention, and severe medriasis, often accompanied by agonizing photophobia lasting several days. Pronounced amnesia is a common outcome with symptoms commencing 30 to 60 minutes post-ingestion and persisting for up to two weeks in some cases. In cases of severe anticholinergic poisoning, intravenous physostigmine serves as an antidote. Detira stramonium stands as a testament to nature's capacity for both healing and harm, a plant deeply interwoven with human history and scientific curiosity. Natural defense mechanisms in Detira stramonium. Detira stramonium commonly known as jimson weed or devil's snare, has long intrigued scientists due to its remarkable natural defense mechanisms. This botanical documentary delves into the intricate chemical production responses exhibited by Detura stramonium, serving as an effective safeguard against an array of biotic and abiotic threats. From herbivores and pathogens to drought and temperature fluctuations, this enigmatic plant has evolved a multifaceted strategy to ensure its survival chemical arsenal. At the heart of Detura stramonium's resilience lie its chemical defenses. These responses are orchestrated through specific protein activities, intricately correlated with distinct domains. Terpenin production is a prime example, targeting herbivores across multiple fronts while also combating abiotic stresses. Protein kinase regulatory subunits, overrepresented and positively selected, are pivotal in driving abiotic responses. Physical chemical divergence underscores the plant's remarkable adaptability. Terpenins, the unsung heroes, play a dual role in plant defense. Not only do they deter herbivores by reducing the sensitivity of taste receptors through sulfokinin (SK) domains, but they also act as lures for carnivorous predators. The genetic domains associated with these immune responses exhibit signs of positive selection and expansion within Detura stramonium signifying their critical importance. Do you think Detura stramonium should be studied more for its potential medical benefits, or should it be strictly avoided due to its toxicity? Tell us in the comments. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel please. The Ingenious Defense Detura stramonium adopts a unique defense strategy, combining both resistance and growth simultaneously. Unlike traditional mechanisms, this plant harnesses the power of dual strategies without negative correlations in experimental conditions. However, resource constraints may necessitate a trade-off between these two methods. Herbivores are not the sole instigators of these responses. Regional specific factors also influence behavior. The Plant Physiology Puzzle Understanding Detura stramonium's defense patterns requires insight into its physiology. As an annual plant, it lacks the regrowth potential of perennial species. Consequently, even minor attacks leave its leaves vulnerable. To compensate, these leaves boast an initial size advantage, redundancy, extended longevity, and the ability to metabolize despite damage. This evolutionary adaptation combines resistance and growth to address threats efficiently. Regional Variability Exploring the genomic sequences within the Detura family reveals intriguing insights. Detura stramonium diverged from its botanical relatives around 30 million years ago, displaying rapid gene family evolution. However, the subspecies of Detura stramonium exhibit substantial variations in gene family contractions and expansions, shaped by factors like immunity, abiotic stress responses, and biotic threat defense. Intriguingly, 
Datura genomes contain abundant repetitive DNA elements, with evidence of recent retrotransposone expansion, likely driven by human activities. Tropane alkaloid armament. Tropane alkaloids constitute another vital line of defense in Datura stramonium. These alkaloids, including scopolamine, atropine, and anisotamine, incapacitate organisms coming into contact with the plant. Notably, Datura stramonium boasts the highest tropane alkaloid production within the Solanaceae family. The PMT gene family responsible for tropane alkaloid development has undergone significant gene expansion throughout the plant's evolutionary history, resulting in higher mutation rates for alkaloid-related traits. Convergent Evolution The use of tropane alkaloids is not unique to Datura stramonium, but has arisen independently in various angiosperm families and evolutionary lineages within the Solanaceae family. This underscores the diversification of tropane alkaloid production observed in regional Datura stramonium variants. Intriguingly, different protein groups and enzyme utilization patterns are observed in forming similar biosynthesis reactions across Solanaceae lineages. Datura stramonium's natural defenses represent an awe-inspiring example of plant adaptability and survival strategies. This botanical marvel employs a complex array of chemical responses, physiological adaptations, and genomic variations to fend off threats, showcasing the intriguing interplay between biology and environmental challenges. Poisoning Incidents In December 2022, Australia witnessed a peculiar outbreak of poisoning incidents involving approximately 200 individuals who reported falling ill after the consumption of spinach products. This alarming occurrence was traced back to a contaminant, Datura stramonium, which had inadvertently intermingled with the spinach leaves during harvesting. This study delves into the intricate world of Datura stramonium, shedding light on its historical significance, traditional uses, and cultivation practices. The poisoning incidents of December 2022 in Australia serve as a stark reminder of the potential hazards associated with unintended ingestion of Datura stramonium. Riviera Farms, a prominent grower from the Gippsland region of Victoria, found itself at the epicenter of this incident. The contamination was attributed to the growth of Datura stramonium, facilitated by increased rainfall, and swift actions were taken by the farm to eradicate this toxic weed from their crops. Traditional Medicine Datura stramonium, commonly known as jimsonweed, harbors a rich history of traditional medicinal use. One of its primary active components, atropine, has been employed for centuries in traditional medicine and recreational pursuits. In the late 18th century, James Anderson, the English physician general of the East India Company, played a pivotal role in introducing and popularizing the smoking of datura leaves in Europe. In ancient China, it found application as an anesthetic during surgical procedures. Early Medicine Historical texts such as John Gerard's Herbal, 1597, and William Lewis's writings from the late 18th century highlight the diverse therapeutic applications of Datura stramonium. These accounts detail the utilization of its juice to treat inflammations, burn injuries, convulsive disorders, epilepsy, mania, and external inflammations. Asthma Treatment during the 19th century, Datura stramonium gained recognition as a remedy for asthma. Smoking the herb was believed to alleviate the symptoms of this respiratory condition. However, with evolving understandings of asthma as an allergic inflammatory reaction and advancements in pharmacology, this practice gradually declined in favor of more effective treatments. Spiritualism and the Occult Across the Americas and Ethiopia, Indigenous communities have historically incorporated Datura species into sacred ceremonies due to their hallucinogenic properties. In India, Datura stramonium holds a sacred status and has been used by ascetics, such as the Aghori, in pursuit of spiritual liberation. In various cultures, it has been associated with magical and visionary purposes, including the creation of zombies in Haiti and the crafting of witches' flying ointments in European witchcraft. The Romani people, credited with introducing Datura stramonium to Europe from India, employed it for divinatory purposes. Additionally, it served as a protective agent against mythical abductions. Do you think Datura's hallucinogenic properties could offer insights into altered states of consciousness? Tell us in the comments. Cultivation 
Detura stramonium thrives in rich, calcareous soil, with nitrogen fertilizer enhancing alkaloid concentration. Cultivated from seed with ample spacing, it is sensitive to frost and requires protection during cold weather. Harvesting entails cutting the entire plant, stripping leaves, and drying the plant, with seeds collected as the fruits burst open. Remarkably, intensive plantations can yield substantial leaf and seed quantities, ranging from 1,100 to 1,700 kg per hectare for leaves and 780 kg per hectare for seeds. Detura stramonium, with its intriguing blend of historical significance, traditional uses, and cultivation practices, continues to captivate researchers and enthusiasts alike. The recent poisoning incidents in Australia underscore the importance of understanding this enigmatic plant and its potential implications for public health and safety. Now it's your turn. We want to hear from you. Do you have any personal encounters with Datura? Have you ever explored its healing potential or encountered its hallucinogenic side? Or maybe you have more questions about this enigmatic plant? Share your thoughts, stories, and questions in the comments below. See you in the next video.